Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the M150 version 3 from Skill Hunt. This is a 14500-AA flashlight. The weight is going to be 34 grams or 1.20 ounces, excluding the battery. Dimensions for the length is going to be 84.0 millimeters or 3.30 inches. Head diameter is going to be 21.0 millimeters or 0.82 inches. It has a voltage range of 0.8 to 4.2 volts, and it features a low voltage indicator and also turn off for the 14500 at about 2.7 volts. It has a beam distance of 110 meters with the 14500 battery, or 61 meters with the nickel metal hydride battery inside. It's IPX8 rated, drop resistant to one meter, and it also has 3000 candela with the 14500 battery at max, or 930 candela at max with the nickel metal hydride battery. It also features a magnetic charging cable, a pocket clip, a lanyard, and spare O-rings that come with it for the accessories. Here we have the box, the light, the pocket clip that comes with the light, the lanyard attached to the light, the included 14500 800 milliamp hour battery, and we have the charging cable, and the manual as well. Not pictured here is the O-rings that come with the light as well. Here we can see the nice finish of the anodized coating. The button with the blue bezel on it. The switch that does light up with an LED in there. It's got a metal top to it, which is kind of nice. We have the hot symbol here. And some texturing along the body here. We have two mounting points potentially for the pocket clip. I mount them on the rear here. We have a magnetic tail cap on the back here. We have the hook lanyard here. And we can see the other side of the light with the charging port here, which is also magnetic. And a little bit heat sinking grooves here in the aluminum. So overall, very, very thin light. Uh, well made. Feels pretty lightweight in the hand, but it's well constructed quality in my opinion. And if we turn the light this way, you might be able to see the orange peel reflector. It's not heavily contoured or detailed with the orange peel, but it is there. And we can see the blue bezel here, which is kind of nice to see that. It's got a nice profile, nice look to it. Let's go ahead and take off the uh, cap here and look at the threads real quick. So we have the O-ring here. It's got a nice smooth action coming out. And since it has a magnet in the tail cap, it kind of attracts the battery to it as you're pulling it out. And we can see the threads here and somewhat inside the light here. It's got a basic contact point inside and another contact point on the other side uh, for the positive and negative, even though you can't see it in there in the light, unfortunately, but it is there. So it does make good contact with this button top battery. Here we can see the light with the battery installed and it is in lockout mode with a indicator here that blinks twice every so often or blinks every so often rather. You can turn this off by double clicking and it is off. You can re-engage by double clicking. So that's one part of the UI which we'll go over a little bit. I'm going to go over the run times listed in the manual here. So these run times are based on the 14500 battery which comes included with the light here. We have a low 2 for 0 0.2 lumens and that runs for about, according to their estimates, 50 days. We have a low 1 which is 1.5 lumens which runs for about 100 hours. A medium 2 for 15 lumens for about 25 hours. And then we have a medium one, which steps down from 100 lumens to 35 lumens for about 2.5 hours on the 100, plus another two hours on the 35 lumens. On high, we have 340 lumens to about 200 lumens, and that'll function for 30 plus minutes or so on 340, and then drop down to 200 lumens for 65 minutes. And then we have a different turbo tier. For the first three minutes of the turbo, we'll have 480 lumens. Then for the next 30 minutes, it drops down to 340 lumens. And then from there, it drops down to 200 lumens for about 60 minutes. On the Turbo 1, it's a little bit different. It's going to be 750 lumens for about one minute. And then it's going to drop down to 340 lumens for about 30 minutes. And then down to 60 uh, minutes for 200 lumens. The AA we won't list, but it does have various different run times for each output, obviously, because it's in nickel metal hydride format and it's based on a 2400 milliamp hour 
specification, and the 14500 is based on an 800 milliamp hour capacity. Let's go over the UI here. As we can see, it's kind of complicated, but once you get used to the UI, it's fairly simple uh, when you're used to the other UI systems that Skillhunt has. So I'm going to go unlock this by clicking four times on the switch here. One, two, three, four. And it should come on in the low mode section. To turn it off, we push once and it is off. To engage the low section here, you hold press and it turns on in the low mode if you hold down it. And it has a blue light indicator here, which is kind of nice to have. And then hold down to cycle through the low modes. Press once and you turn it off. So let's do that again. Hold in. Hold down the cycle. And press once to turn off. I don't know if you can see, but it has the glass lens here with AR coating and it has a orange peel reflector. So it gives a nice smooth throw. To engage in the regular memory mode, which has M1, M2, and high, you simply click once and does have memory mode. And then to rotate, I believe you hold it down and it rotates through the different modes. And it will remember which mode you were left on last. Turn off, you click once, turn back on, it comes back on to the last memorized mode. Now to access the turbo here, you simply double click and you have turbo. Hold and you can change turbo one and turbo two. Click once and it's off. To get to the strobe modes, which has three different modes, you click three times and then once you're in strobe mode, you click twice to cycle through the UI. One, two, three. And we should be in beacon mode here because that's what it last left off. Double click. We are in strobe, double click. And we're in SOS mode. Press one click to turn off. And to lock it out, one, two, three, four. It is now locked out. It's important to note that there is a red light that stays on as a indicator light to find it, it since it's in lockout mode. To turn that off, you're going to do two clicks while in lockout mode. One, two, and it is no longer there. If you push down the button in lockout mode, it still turns on in the lowest mode, which is kind of nice at night if you just need to see something real quick. You can push that down and it will turn on. But that also might be a concern if you have this jammed up with gear in your backpack or travel on bag or whatever, it could potentially turn on and slowly drain the batteries. Okay, we're back shooting an Aperture 7.1, 24 frames per second, ISO is 2500 with a white balance of 5000K and a Panasonic GH2. Here we have the light in lockout mode. If you can see, there's a red LED light blinking to indicate that it's locked out so that you can find it in the dark at night. If we push and hold down the button, it'll come in in the lowest mode here, which is moonlight mode. I'm right up against the mat here with the moonlight mode. If I pull up about maybe six inches off the table, you can kind of see the light there on the table and the profile. Let's go ahead and unlock this now. One, two, three, four, and it'll come on in low mode here. I believe this is the second lowest mode if we hold down the light. Yep. So this is the lowest mode here. And to compare it to the low two, you can kind of see that my hand there in the light. I'm about maybe about a foot off the table. If I come up towards the camera, uh, about two feet, two and a half feet off the table here, we can see the hot spot here. And you can't see the spill coming to, towards the edge, but it is here, even though it doesn't show up on the camera. It's a nice smooth spill. There's no artifacts. And the color rendering is very good, especially with this kind of mat here with all the colors. We can see that it pops out even on the low two mode. Okay, so that now we've seen low two, let's go to the medium set, which you push once, and uh, we are in the medium, I believe, one, or medium two, and then medium one. Push and hold down. We're at a higher level, and then we're at the high level here. 
so you can see it just washes out after a while and we'll cycle back to the first medium setting of the light so again nice hot spot here color rendering has come out pretty good on the camera here and let's bump back up to the second medium highest here or the second level of medium and to high mode okay so let's turn that off and let's go to turbo modes double click we are in turbo mode here hold and we are in the top turbo mode now so there's a slight change I'll show you again we're in the turbo 2 mode not the highest mode and if we hold turbo 1 turbo 2 turbo 1 very bright and the colors seem washed out in the camera because we're at a high ISO but seems pretty good here we have the Opal Lightmaster Pro connected to my phone, measuring the Lux, the temperature rating in CCT, and the CRI rating in RAW. Here we have the lowest mode at about a foot off the table, almost directly into the sensor. We're getting about 14 Lux out of it and about 41K temperature and 99.1 RA, or CRI. Let's go to low 2. And we go up to about 247 lux, about 41k by 97.7 or so. Let's head to the medium modes here. We're in medium one, and it goes up to about 689 or about 700 lux, and about 41k temperature and 97 CRI. Let's go up to the medium two. Now we're getting a little bit higher at about 44 or 45k or 4.5k lux or 4,500 and 41k for the temperature rating and 97 for the RA. Let's go up to high here and we get about 14,271 for the lux and about 4,200 for the Kelvin rating or the CCT and still maintaining a 97 CRI rating. Let's turn this off and give it a break for the turbo. And let's go ahead and do the turbo 2 first, the lower of the turbos. Double click. And we're getting approximately almost 19,000 lux, 20,000 lux here. And about 41k on the CCT. And 97 on the CRI. Let's hold this down and go to the turbo 1. And we're getting about 28,000 lux at this angle, about a foot off the table and off center from the uh, sensor. Again, 42 or 41K on the color and 97 on the CRI rating. Here we can see the unit being charged by the magnetic cable. It's charging at about 0.67 amps towards the last part of the charging cycle here. Battery is almost fully charged as I didn't use it too much, but we still see the red LED light inside the charger indicating that it is charging. When it's fully charged, this will show a brighter blue light LED. So again, we're at 5.04 volts at about 0.61 amps going into the cable here charging. So it is doing a pretty good job for self-sufficient charging. And again, this is a magnetic system both the cable and the item on the light so it sticks together fairly well on the light here okay we're back outside shooting at an aperture of 3.5 24 frames per second an iso 2500 with a white balance of 5000 k on a panasonic gh2 with a 14 to 42 millimeter lens here we have the light in moonlight mode or the lowest mode my hand in front of the camera you can see there I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to low 2. And you can't see too much in front of you yet. At least the camera can't show it, but it is there a little bit brighter. Let's go into the medium section. So we're on medium 2. And you can kind of see on the ground there where the leaves are, the light is starting to show on the camera. Let's bump this up one more. So now it's starting to get a little more brighter. And that's about roughly 10 feet in front of us in the backyard here. Let's bump up to high mode. 
And we have a tree at up about maybe 15 feet further up the brook here, about 20 feet out there where the light is. Okay, let's do turbo, the lower part of the turbo, turbo two. This is turbo two. And we can see about maybe on the right there, about 30 feet out. And there's a pile of wood there in the backyard. You can kind of see it. And we have the tree about 20 feet in front of us. And then about five to 10 feet in front of us with the yard here. Let's turn that off and give it a second to cool off. And we'll go to turbo one. This is turbo one. And again, a pre an impressive distance for this. We see the pile of wood back there that's about 35 to 40 feet out. And we have the tree about 25 feet out in front of us, closer trees, and then finally right in front of us here. Some final thoughts on the Skill Hunt M150 version three. Overall, I think it's a really great light. It definitely packs a lot of features and quality options, especially with its own proprietary charging system, which can be a plus or a minus. In this case, I think it's pretty good because it works fairly well with ha having to move the battery out of the light. The fact that this also uses AA batteries in it makes this a pretty useful light in its own self if you don't have access to the charger, especially for emergency situations. I like the fact that the LED in the switch and the switch itself is covered by a metal cap over the boot and you can also turn the light off if you want to while it's in lockout mode. I do appreciate a lockout mode even if it is a digital one not a physical one where you twist halfway and turn it off. I think it looks pretty well done pretty well made and it's got a nice coating of, of anodized aluminum the skill hunt logo here and on the opposite side so it looks pretty nice to carry around and it's very small too so that's one thing i noticed about this light that's a very small light for what it does it's like on par with the uh, lumen top tool 2.0 which i also have and use uh, although that is more of a tail clicky switch type of light the front is pretty decent it has a nice throw a nice spill a nice hot spot for me so i like that a lot about the light i per personally prefer that some people might not but it's a good Compromise for a small EDC carrying flashlight and yes, I do believe that you can carry this EDC wise pretty well the, the clip is nothing to write home about but it does work functionally it does have decent retention on it So you can still use that I like to keep lanyards on all my lights here because I tend to drop them and I can do hands-free Temporarily with this the magnet inside is decent Although I'm not a fan of having any kind of magnets on my lights because I use compasses and sometimes the magnets can interfere with that. That being said, you can tail stand this to a degree even with the lanyard on it. It takes a little bit of practice. It's a little bit off, but it's not, per it's not perfect, but it, but it can do in a pinch if you have it right. That being said, it does have a metal back so you can attach it to metal services while you're working on the car. So that is a bonus. I personally prefer a switch in the rear like this, but I do realize for the price and for the size and for the simplicity that would be probably too complicated to implement in a light like this. Overall, I think this light is a very good buy and you definitely find it on killzoneflashlights.com. Once again, I want to thank Jody for sending this out. I recommend this light to anybody who just wants to have an everyday carry light that you can easily charge up quickly when you get home from work it's got good run times on it and if you're outdoors a lot this can come in handy or just around the house so it has a, a lot of uses from emergencies to camping to everyday work at at the job or at home or whatever you want overall i think uh, the quality skill is pretty decent and I, I do have a couple other products that i do enjoy and use as well so i definitely recommend this and that's all I have to say about the Skill Hunt M150 version 3. Thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy your day.